Today I'm here to give you a van tour of that and essentially it's a farmhouse cottage on wheels. It's bloody gorge. Hello, my name is Ryan and I'm from Valley Campus and I'm here again to give you a van tour. Today it's Lily, it's a Citroen Relay, it's 2017, it's ULEZ and it was built by the girls at Handcrafted Campers. Their thinking behind the van, the design, the style, the theme is a kind of rustic farmhouse vibe. We will take a good look at that in a second, but before we do, if you are looking for inspiration, I recommend you subscribe to our channel because we are hitting two van tours a month. So there's plenty of content for you to get some ideas, some inspiration for your own builds. Anyway, that's enough Poop Plops chat. Let's go and have a look at this beauty. First things first, as it is a beautiful day, let's geek out on some Aleckis. So, this van has been populated with a Victron electrical setup. It's an amazing setup and you really won't go far wrong. There are three ways to charge this van. Firstly, you have the sun's energy from the 305 watt solar panel that is positioned on the roof of this bad boy. Secondly, you have the split charge system. So what that is, is the vehicle's alternator in the front of the vehicle when you're driving will normally charge just the battery that the vehicle has. But the split charge splits it over the two batteries so your ledger battery battery will be charged as well. The third way, can you guess it? Plugging that bad boy in on a campsite. 240, all your all your sockets come live. You can plug your laptops, your, your washing machine, whatever you've got with you. On board this vehicle in particular, you have the Victron Multi Plus Inverter. It gives you a 900 watt maximum output power, a 430 watt continuous power. The lithium battery on board is 220 amp hour. That is a ginormous amount. I would say personally, I've got a similar setup in my van and I can go off grid for three, four days. If it's a nice day like this, I mean, indefinitely with regards to power because you're harnessing the UV rays. So the other thing to mention as we're at the rear of the van is the garage area, as you can see behind me. The space isn't, isn't massive, but I'd say it's adequate for, for three people traveling. You can get a few paddle boards, a few wetsuits, um, clothes, things like that. And there's also access to the gubbins of the water system in there as well, the pump and a few bits like that. Anyway, that's enough geeking out. I am a little bit tired, so I'm gonna go to the boudoir. <laughs> Oh. So here's the bedroom, the uh, the place where dreams are made and broken. Uh, the bed in this this van in particular is, I would say, very very nice, very cosy. Starting at this end, working back, we've got the lovely linen curtains. As you can see, either side of me, you're parked up at a beach or somewhere beautiful. You can have the doors open. You could be starkers in here, have those bad boys shut, and still get that nice breeze. Very nice. It's a very nice touch, which we don't see on a lot of on a lot of campers. I recommend if you are building one to get some of these put in. Next day, going on to the bed itself, it's a memory foam bed. It is 1200 by 1800 wide and long, and it's uber comfy. Behind me, we have the single bed that is 700 by 2000, or for normal people, that'll be two meters by 0 0.7, 700 centimeters, 200 centimeters. I think that's right. There are some extra features. So by your feet, there is a small window that opens so you can look outside and spy on things or just take in the general surroundings of the camper. Above your head, there are two reading lights. Above you, you have extra storage. So you've got the two cupboards here where you can put all your belly time things, I guess. And then above, you have the skylight for the stargazing lovers among us. So the showpiece of the bedroom is the divider. Uh, having that divider in this space really works. It does help separate the living area to the bedroom area. And it's something I personally would push for in my own van. Um, the piece here is absolutely spectacular. It has been hand cut by Shelley over a period of a week. So it really is a showpiece to this van. Anyway, that's enough pillow talk, you. Let's go get a midnight snack, go on. Yo. So this is the living space as we move further into the van. This is the living, working, dining, living area. We have the two seats here and the table, and it is a very, very lovely functional space. Going back to the style of the van, the van is beautiful. It has that farmhouse, that rustic, oaky, nature-y kind of cottage, cottagey vibes. The smell of the wood 
in this van is overwhelming. It's absolutely beautiful. It really is. It's got that kind of farmhouse, farmhouse vibe. We love it. Talking about the things that are around me in this space. So first up, as I said before, we've got the two seats. Um, this is the single bed for those longer folk in your world. It 2000 millimeters, that's quite a length. And it's very easy to set up as you can see. And the bench again with the bench seating. So you do have seating for three people in this space. Above me, there is some beautiful storage. We have extra cupboards for you to put your bits and bobs away. And there's some opposite as well. And then we also have the extractor fan over there for use with the shower. And there's also more storage below inside these seats as well. So although on the kind of outlook, it doesn't look like there's a lot of space, it's kind of a bit cozy. There's a lot more hidden areas in this camper where the functionality and usability has been really kind of focused on. Next to me, we have this little bit of electricity here. This is the digital multi-control unit from Victron and also the BMV. I'll go with the top first and work my way down. Um, so the BMV is you basically your battery monitor. So it shows you your the power that is on the battery, what power you're using, and also the percentage of the battery. So the kind of lifespan of the battery. Looking at the digital module control, um, this essentially is for when you are plugged in at your campsite or your mate's house or wherever it may be and you can either flick the charger on so the the battery is charging or you can flick the inverter on you can also um, limit the the currents so if you've got a 10 amp system you can put that on 9.5 and it won't uh, trip out anything in the van as well or you can max it out if you're at your mate's house just max it out 16 look. boom so below the table, we've got the 240 sockets and the USB. So when you're using that power system, that is obviously what will come live. Moving on, we've got the 360 swivel table, which is, let's have a go at this, which is powered by the Lagoon table leg. It really is 360 degrees. It really is a treat. Um, this leg comes in three pieces. So you have the two parts of the leg, the upright, the horizontal, and also the top piece, which provides kind of the staple to your worktop. So what you can do if you are building a van is you can create any size, shape, or make of table as you wish. You can make a massive one out of plasticine or a tiny one out of cheese. The girls here have gone for a nice pine one and it works a treat. Anyway, that's enough living, working, dining area. Uh, let's go get some scrag because I am for Mish. Let's go to the kitchen. So here we are, the kitchen. Um, as I said, I was hungry. Unfortunately, this is a brand new camper, so there is no food. But I managed to source a packet of classic snack right mini cheese bakes from the lovely Lidl's. You can't beat these bad boys. They're small, they're tasty, they're crispy, they're cheesy. Link in the description. So here we are in the heart of the camper van. There's some uh, simple beauty of this, um, this lightweight reclaimed pine kitchen. The oak worktop is absolutely beautiful. And as we said before, this, it really gives a kind of sense of that cottage. Oh, it's like homely, homely feel. I feel as if my nan could be stood there sort of cooking up cottage pine. Um, yeah, really, really nice feel. And again, the smell just, just resonates through. So first up, we have the twin hob burner, which is uh, powered by the gas that is underneath. You can actually fit a replacement gas bottle in the rear if you needed to. Uh, but having used these myself, they're, they last this quite a long time with considerable amount of cooking. Um, so yeah, um, really nice, a really nice space. Um, we've got the space moving down over here. We've got a nice bit of chopping area and we've got the square sink with the hot water matte black tap. That is powered by the whale space water heater that is on board in the rear. There are two tanks on board, both under slung, so hidden away out of sight, out of mind. And you've got a fresh water tank and a waste tank. Behind me, we have the Boo 65 litre fridge freezer. Most campers do not have fridge freezers this big. They usually max out about 50, even in some big fans. That's what we've seen. That's what we're kind of used to. So to have this 65 litre uh, in that position is, is such a good feature to have. 
one of the things that is fantastic about this kitchen, which, which kind of contributes to the van as a whole, is the amount of storage space that comes. Uh, so you have the two drawers at the top and the two, the two cupboards side by side with another one there in the middle. Again, plenty of space to store all your kitchen items, your food, and with the large fridge freezer, you're laughing. You can go away for a long time in this bad boy. Least but not last, is my favorite feature and that is the lost and found tiles as the, as the girls describe them but they're just a nice feature that finish off that space um, and sort of give you something to look at when you're cooking it is hot today i think i need a little bit of a wash what do you reckon bathroom so here we are sat on the old poop lops so this bathroom in particular has tri functionality okay firstly you've got the poop plops secondly it's an open top shower the openness is all about the loveliness and that's what this thing gives thirdly it's a dry room um for me personally i think this would be ideal after a surf you can stick your wetsuit in here and just forget about it the next day it should be relatively dry and you can crack on back out in the water the beautiful thing about this shower is it does have that open top I mean, you can literally be showering at your beautiful destination, or you may even want to flash a little bit of nip nip to a rambler. Looking at the space around me, we've got the copper tone aluminium composite walls. It's beautiful. It's nice to tap, it's waterproof, and it's got a nice shimmery, nice reflective kind of tone to it, which actually creates more space, I feel, in the, in the area. We've got the matte black mixer tap, and we've also got the copper fixings along with the copper rail above my head. To my left, we've got the linen curtain, the waterproof linen curtain, which kind of works with the space as well. It is, is in keeping with that design, that rustic kind of vibe, and we absolutely love it. We have the extractor fan, the 12 volt extractor fan above us. It's a Hecti. If you are interested, it's very good. Please see below for the link to that one in the description. Anyway, all this talking of turning has got me needing poop blocks myself, so I gotta go. Guys, I've been Ryan. This has been the wonderful Lily. Thank you for watching. If fan tours are your thing and you're looking for more inspiration, please click there and click below to subscribe and you will see lots more van tours we do two a month because we give away camper vans every month if you do want to win a camper please head to vannycampers.co.uk and buy yourself a ticket and potentially you could win one of these bad boys I love you all very much and I shall see you again. Good night. Bosh.